Okay, job costing within QuickBooks Online. This has been a very hot topic for quite some time now. By now, you should have enough information out there to instruct you on how to perform the basic functions of job costing. And before you go any further into this tutorial, make sure that you educate yourself on how to perform those tasks. By basic or simple, I mean allocating revenue to a specific job, allocating subcontractor and supplies and other cost of goods sold back to a job in order to view profitability by job by, by running a P&L and filtering on that customer or subcustomer. That's completely easy to do. In the interest of time, I'm not going to walk through that. There is enough information out there to walk you through that. So in the interest of time, I'm only going to focus on the labor allocation piece. This tutorial is what I like to call the negative duplication method. And stay with me, the, the steps, if you, if you follow the steps exactly, it's, it works. But don't, I might lose some of you in step number two or three because the, it, it might seem completely outrageous for example, we're going to create a new sales tax account. So what does sales tax have to do with job costing? We're simply using the power of having sales tax appear on, a, on an invoice and driving a value on the balance sheet. We're just simply using that power in conjunction with negative duplication. So I'll get into all that in a couple of minutes. All right, so just bear with me. First thing you want to do is make sure that your company settings are all correct. So within the sales tab, make sure you have deposit enabled. That's very important. And within the advanced tab, under time tracking, add service field to timesheets and make single time activity billable to customer. Make sure those are enabled as well. Next, we're going to go to our chart of accounts and create a new expense account. And I actually created this already so you're going to click new and then your category type will be expenses detail type doesn't matter but you can select cost of good labor and then just name it allocated labor next go to your products and services new service and I already created this as well and you can also name this allocated labor. Check I sell this product service to my customers. Make sure is taxable is enabled. It's very important. And we're actually going to point this to the allocated labor expense account that we just created. So I might be losing you already, but normally we would associate this with an income account if we're if we're uh, including a service on an invoice normally that indicates that we're going to get paid for that service it's going to be revenue or income but for this workaround we're going to point it to the allocated labor expense account and you'll see the connection at the end and don't worry about purchasing next we're going to create a new sales tax agency so add edit tax rates and agencies new and in order to not confuse yourself and have uh, the same name as the expense account that we just created on the chart of accounts, just name it labor allocation and make the rate 100%. Okay, so now we have our expense account, we have our product and service, we have our sales tax set up and our company settings are configured properly. So now what we're gonna do is generate a timesheet. So we have an employee named Homer Simpson and on 6-8 he worked five hours at our Tyson Balf job. That's the name of my dog for those of you that don't know. And we're going to select billable. Our service is going to be our allocated labor. And Tyson, or I'm sorry, Homer Simpson's rate is $15 an hour. 
So we'll save that. Now, every time you create a timesheet and mark it as billable and identify a customer or subcustomer, if you go back into that customer account, you'll see a time charge appear. Now, this is designed for those that wish to bill this particular time back to the customer. So you have the option to start an invoice. We're obviously not billing anybody, but we are going to utilize the functionality to convert this into an invoice. So we're going to click start invoice. And then everything is uh, pre-populated for us. We have five hours of $15 an hour. So our total is 75. It's taxable. We're actually going to select our labor allocation sales tax and to essentially double this amount. So now we have a balance due of 150. Obviously we're not dealing with anything. Uh, we're not billing anybody anything. We don't want anything sitting in accounts receivable. We essentially, our goal is to create a zero dollar invoice. So how do we do that? We say that we receive the deposit for the, the, the same amount. So we're gonna eyeball this 150 and then put it into this de deposit box. And whenever you enter a value in the deposit box, this deposit to field will populate and we're going to move that into undeposited funds. So we'll save this. All right, and now let's see how that impacts the financial statements. So we'll run a P&L. We'll just do all dates. Here we have this allocated labor as a negative amount. Normally, uh, that's a positive amount. If you have expenses, that's that appears as positive on a P&L. So we're not done yet, but that's that's. A, I just want to walk you through how each step impacts the financials. So that would generate a negative $75 within our allocated labor expense account. And then obviously since we selected the labor allocation sales tax, we have a balance there of 75. And obviously we don't, that doesn't exist. So we don't owe $75 to anybody. It's just a dummy account for purposes of this workaround. And, and we also have, uh, it's hidden within the, the total on deposited funds, but we also have this 150 sitting in undeposited funds. So that's not accurate also. So the next step that we're going to take is we're going to create a bank deposit. Okay, now here, our goal is to also create a $0 deposit. So how do we do that? We have our 150 deposit that we just informed QuickBooks that we put into undeposited funds. So we're going to select this. And then in this bottom section, we're going to choose our allocated labor expense account, track returns for customers, very important. And we're just going to back it out. And our customer is Tyson Bell. So now we have a zero dollar deposit. And this says inventory asset, but it really doesn't matter. It's not going to impact or compromise any reconciliations, but by default, normally this would be your, your, your primary operating account. So we'll save and close that. Now on the balance sheet, we still have this $75 sitting in the labor allocation sales tax payable account. The 150 has been removed from undeposited funds. And our PL is see where the negative duplication comes in. Now it's positive $75. That's accurate. And Really what I should have done is filtered on Tyson Bale. All right, so he received $1,500 and his allocated labor amount was $75. So that's 
that's what we want to see. And now we have an accurate um, profitability report with Alc with labor included. But on a general PL, we still have this $75 sitting there, and that's not accurate. We, we're, we essentially just want we, we, we just want a non-posting transaction. That's all we want to do. So we want to get rid of the $75 in uh, allocated labor, and we want to get rid of this $75 in the labor allocation payable. So all we do is create a journal entry, and we're going to debit the labor allocation payable and credit the allocated labor expense account and make sure not to include the customer or sub customer leave that blank okay so that's gone and our allocated labor is gone but if we want to drill down to a, a job or a sub customer there we have it. All right. So that's that's the workaround. Now, for those of you that think that this could be uh, very time consuming, it's not. Essentially, what what you should do is make sure all of your timesheets are and in, uh, input and approved or whatever, and then just just look at how many jobs. If, let's assume you have a weekly payroll and you uh, actively within the pay period worked on five jobs. Go to those five those five sub customers, you, and and then you'll you'll see in each of the sub customers a bunch of time charges. So if there was uh, if Homer Simpson had a bunch of uh, hours. Uh, maybe he he worked three days or something, so you'd see three time charges. All you have to do is start invoice and add all the time charges to that one invoices to that one invoice, and then duplicate it using the the labor allocation payable. Enter the the total amount in the deposit, deposit it to undeposited funds, and then just do that for all five jobs. So. And then you'll only have to create one deposit. So if you have five jobs, you're going to have five invoices with deposits sitting in undeposited funds. And then you'll want to create five new deposits for the total amounts by each sub customer, if that makes sense. So if you, and then you just have to do one journal entry, which basically you just run a balance sheet and you look at the amount sitting in the labor allocation payable account and you just debit that and credit the allocated labor expense account because it's, it's going to be the same amount and they're just going to wash each other out. So if you have one job, then that would require you to create, uh, to convert one time charge or, or multiple time charges within that one sub customer account, you'll have to create one invoice, one bank deposit, one journal entry. If you have five jobs, you would have to create five invoices, one bank deposit, one journal entry. If you have a hundred jobs, unfortunately you would have to create a uh, hundred invoices, but one bank deposit and one journal entry. Okay. So it's really not, that time consuming and i'm sure this can also be enhanced possibly somebody could could transaction pro importer some excel model to make this a little bit more streamlined but that's that's the basics and um let me know what you guys think please feel free to comment ask me questions uh let me know if you're having any problems and uh hopefully this is helpful all right take care